OK, thanks for the introduction. And uh, in this presentation, I would like to share our recent research about the security of uh, affluent pop-up behaviors in Android Web U. Uh, in modern web applications, affluent pop-up are frequently used. Here is a snapshot of uh, CN. Uh, affluents are used to load untrusted content uh, advertisement here. Uh, the, in the past years, uh, uh, there are a lot of security issues are found in FM pop-ups, and the security of the behaviors have been well studied. But the existing work mainly focuses on regular browser, and uh, the research, security search on a new web environment called Android Web U is still missing. Uh, so what is Web U, and why the security research on Web U is so important? Web U is an embedded browser-like UI component. Uh, uh, web view can be easily integrated in mobile apps to show web pages and run JavaScript code, but uh, without leaving these uh, applications. And we, we usually call this application as hybrid uh, uh, apps. Uh, web view is very easy to use and powerful and uh, popular. Uh, so if there is any security issue found in web view, it's, uh, this security issue may have serious uh, security impacts uh, on mobile apps. Uh, motivation, we found the WebU provided uh, several unique features, and these features heavily impact uh, the behaviors of Affluent uh, pop-ups. So there is a, a, a security uh, uh, question is raised. Are Affluent pop-ups are still safe in this new web environment? Uh, motivated by this research question, we conduct the first security uh, study on the security of Affluent pop-up behaviors in Android WebU. As a result, we found uh, several critical and fundamental design flaws and uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, we call this vulnerabilities a differential context vulnerabilities, D or DCV for short. Uh, later, so we assessed uh, the security inspection of DCVs on real world apps. Uh, for this purpose, we also designed a novel vulnerability detection tool called uh, DCV Hunter. And uh, we found that DCV uh, has a serious security inspection on real world apps. And uh, we uh, also found uh, many high-profile apps are impacted. Uh, last, uh, we also designed a novel defense solution. For our security uh, study and the DCV, uh, before we dive to them, we first define our threat model. Uh, we use this picture to show the attack scenario. The left part is a mobile app, and the right part is a web server. In real time, the mobile app will start a web server to contact the web server. Uh, contact web view to contact, uh, to contact the web server and show its web content. And inside the web app, we assume the mobile code is totally benign, but the web view may contain some untrusted content. In particular, we assume the main frame or top frame is benign, but the uh, app frame that loads uh, untrusted content, like a third party tracking code, uh, may be malicious. So the untrusted uh, affluent pop-ups may directly attack any potential objects like uh, the top frame, main frame, and the uh, web view itself, or, and uh, even mobile code. And uh, our security study mainly focused on the inconsistency between regular browsers and the web view. Uh, this inconsisten uh, inconsistencies are caused by web view's unique UI and the programming features. And uh, so a, nat a natural attack idea is that untrusted affluent pop-ups <coughs> may leverage or trigger these inconsistencies to get some dangerous and risky abilities. We found that this uh, attack uh, uh, idea is uh, very uh, feasible and possible in practice. Uh, so what are the inconsistencies uh, between regular browsers and web view? Why they cause so serious security issues? And there are mainly two types of inconsistencies. Uh, uh, the first type is about UI design. And this picture shows the completion between regular browser and web view. And uh, we can notice web view only provided one area for showing web content without any address bar or table bar. And uh, this causes a serious security issues. The first security issue is from the lack of address bar. Uh, so if uh, uh, and trusted affluent pop-ups uh, can secretly navigate to the mainframe. Uh, <coughs> uh, the phishing attack can be easily launched. And we found that this attack uh, is uh, possible in practice. This is uh, totally determined by the navigation policy. Uh, indeed, uh, this policy directly allow any subframe to directly navigate to the mainframe. Even the subframe has totally different origins with the mainframe. Uh, 
why the, uh, the navigation policy is done in this way. This uh, indeed uh, this uh, navigation policy is designed for regular browser and the web view directly inherits this navigation from regular browser. Uh, this policy is uh, not uh, harmful for regular browser but uh, very dangerous for web view. So here is an example to show the security issue. This is a, this is a, a popular banking app. Developers try to use the web view to help a user to reset the password. In this web, uh, web page, third-party content is included uh, in our iframe. This iframe can uh, or has the capability to uh, leverage the navigation policy to securely navigate uh, the main frame, and the phishing cat may work. Uh, another security issue is from the lack of a table bar. Uh, there is a very important uh, implementation principle. A uh, different web window is uh, rendered by different web UI. So attackers may launch a UI redressing attack. Uh, here is uh, uh, the process. Uh, this is a benign web view. Uh, the untrusted iframe may generate a pop-up window, and this uh, new window will be rendered in a different uh, new uh, web view. And the attacker need to find a way to, uh, to overlap uh, the new uh, web view, uh, malicious web view, to overlap the benign uh, web view. We found that this attack uh, is also possible. We call this attack as uh, overlap attack. This is because many apps um, manage the rendering order of multiple web views by themselves. Uh, so, but uh, this uh, capability is initially designed for benign code, but uh, uh, there is a fundamental design flaws, uh, flaws in uh, web view. Malicious, can, malicious code can also get this capability. And uh, another case is some app may place uh, this newly created web view behind the uh, benign uh, web view. And uh, it is still possible for attacker to launch a phishing attack. The attacker just need uh, to find a way to close the current uh, benign web view. Uh, this is implemented by calling JavaScript API windows close. And when this API is, clo uh, is called, uh, web view, uh, the corresponding web view event, uh, event handler will also be triggered. And if this uh, event handler is not uh, properly implemented, uh, attackers still have a chance to launch an attack. Uh, similar with uh, the previous attack, uh, the corresponding event handler also has a very fundamental uh, design flaws. Uh, so it's hard for developers to distinguish uh, uh, the operation is done by malicious code or benign code. So this is the first, uh, oh, there, uh, here is I use an example to show the uh, security consequence. And this is uh, leading the flight uh, searching app. And the uh, app developers try to use the web view to show uh, the flight uh, uh, tickets information provided by AA.CRM. And in this web page, untrusted app name is also included. So attackers can uh, directly launch overlap attack, generate pop-up, and use uh, this pop-up window to overlap the benign uh, web view window. So this is the first type of in consi uh, consistency uh, about the UI and its uh, security issues. And the second type is about the programming features. And we found the web view provides uh, many uh, programming APIs. And this API is allow developers to do customization uh, for their own web view instances. And, uh, but we found that there is a strong conflict between the web view uh, customization and the regular web browsers. Uh, so developers can leverage this, uh, this conflict to uh, do a navigation attack, uh, still uh, can directly navigate the mainframe. And uh, the difference between this attack and the uh, previous attack, uh, uh, previous navigation attack, uh, is that this attack is totally privileged. Uh, all existing defense uh, solutions, including iFrame Sandbox, are limited to prevent uh, this kind of attack. So, uh, so indicates uh, these two attacks, redressing attack and uh, uh, navigation attack. Uh, we found the attacker can also do malicious things, but uh, uh, also hand, uh, hide their own malicious origins. Like, uh, 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 for example, developer, uh, sorry, malicious uh, attackers may directly steal sensitive information 
or access uh, uh, sens sensitive hardware like a camera, uh, but so without uh, any uh, limitations. We, in our paper, we also uh, showed uh, uh, all exciting defense solutions are limited uh, to prevent DCV-based attacks. And uh, for the uh, security assessments, uh, for this purpose, we design a novel uh, vulnerability detection tool called the DCV Hunter. This picture has shown the workflow. Uh, firstly, DCV Hunter tries to reconstruct uh, the con contest for each web view instance, and uh, later it determines if untrusted FMM uh, frame or pop-up uh, uh, include, uh, includes. And uh, if, uh, if the untrusted FMM pop-up includes, uh, attacker may uh, have the attack surface to launch DCV attacks. Last, the DCV Hunter will try to determine the exceptions of uh, DCV vulnerabilities. By applying DCV Hunter on a large number of uh, hybrid apps, we found uh, many hybrid uh, apps uh, are potentially vulnerable. Almost 14% uh, uh, of them uh, are, are, are proper. Uh, so, but, uh, and later we also check uh, uh, and uh, verified uh, these uh, potential vulnerable apps have, uh, have been downloaded by uh, more than 90 billion times. And we also uh, verify our tools has a very low for supportive. And this table has given more details about uh, uh, each attack. And from this uh, uh, table, we can notice uh, the navigation uh, attacks um, uh, almost impacts all potential vulnerable apps. Uh, this is because the consequence of a navigation attack uh, can be easily satisfied. And uh, we also manually verify many uh, popular apps. Uh, many of them uh, uh, are embedded, like uh, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, in uh, Instagram, Google News, Skype, Uber, Uber, and WeChat. And uh, many third party libraries are also embedded, like Facebook React Native Library. And the more interesting things is uh, we found the many uh, leading uh, password management app and the ban banking app are also embedded. So all this indicates that DCV has a very serious security uh, in space. And uh, later, and then uh, last, uh, we uh, use another example for case study. This uh, example is a Facebook Messenger, different from previous two examples. This app implements its own address bar. Uh, this uh, address, homemade address bar can somehow reduce the inconsistency uh, consistency between regular browser and uh, web view. But uh, we found that uh, this address bar has a lot of security issues. And in our papers, we give a detailed explanation. And here, we only focus on one problem. And uh, this is the problem is uh, uh, related to risk condition. This, we use a picture to show the attacker's view. And the attacker may send the message to victim user. When user click this uh, link, a web view is started to show the corresponding web content. And uh, there is a address bar to show the uh, URL that are being loaded by the web, uh, web view. And uh, it is eBay.cm here. And if attacker launch web view uh, UI redressing attack, uh, like this, uh, first generates a pop-up, and this uh, newly uh, created web view will uh, overlap with the old benign web view UI. But the uh, address bar can reflect uh, the change of uh, web content. So user may notice, uh, uh, notice it, and uh, the phishing attack may fail. But uh, we find the developer, uh, attackers can uh, still have some chances uh, to launch this uh, phishing attack by combining a couple of uh, attacks together. Firstly, uh, attackers still generate this pop-up web UI, and uh, then attacker refresh the old uh, web view UI in, uh, that is placed in background. And in this way, the address bar will show the benign uh, URL. This is because the new web UI and the old, uh, and the old web UI share the uh, same address bar. So, if, uh, so the address bar only shows uh, URLs that uh, is the last access by this uh, uh, web view. So if the background web view uh, access the benign URL uh, at a, uh, in the end, the address bar will totally show the benign URL. And here, this picture shows the final result. 
And we also give more, detail, more uh, demos uh, in the bottom term link, and uh, you can also find this link in our paper. And uh, we, uh, we have to report all our solution, uh, oh, sorry, all findings to Android and Facebook security teams and other app developers, and many of them have confirmed these uh, uh, findings. And, uh, but we, we find that it's really hard for developers to fix this problem because these are looted uh, from the in, uh, in consistency between regular browser and web view. It's not caused by some programming uh, mistakes. So we develop a novel defense solution. And uh, in our evaluation, we verify our solution is uh, effective, compatible, and uh, uh, cause only uh, low overheads. So conclusion, WebView has attracted more and more attention. And uh, uh, the, in past years, the, uh, the study about uh, iFrame pop-ups have been well done in regular browser. But their behaviors are really understood uh, in the new web environment of WebView. So our paper has filled the gap. Uh, discover, uh, we discovered a new, uh, new class of vulnerabilities and designed a new uh, detection tool and uh, also with a new defense solution. And uh, we also verify this way has a series of security uh, in space. And, uh, but uh, uh, we feel the, uh, uh, the research is now done because of the in con uh, consistency between regular browser uh, and the web use may not only impact uh, uh, FLM pop up behaviors, but, but also impact other sensitive web behaviors. So we encourage researchers to uh, expose uh, more uh, sensitive web behaviors and uh, enhance the uh, web use security. Okay, thanks. I'm ready for uh, questions. As usual, use the microphones. Hi, uh, my name is Bobo from Facebook. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I had a question about the Messenger case study. So I'm not sure I fully followed. Was the URL that was sent to the victim user legitimately that URL? It wasn't like a Unicode lookalike character that was replaced in anything. And then second, what was the mitigation? Uh, so you just mentioned a case study about the Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, because time limitation, I quickly go through these things. and. Uh, uh, and uh, in our paper, we give the more uh, details. And uh, for our mitigation, and uh, b yeah, just uh, because there is uh, the time limitation, I quickly uh, mentioned them. And uh, our, all, all these uh, 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 solutions are uh, mentioned in our paper. OK, I'll look at the paper. Hello, uh, Jeffrey Goldberg from 1Password. Uh, did you reach out to the vendors you mentioned? And if you did, and I don't know about it, I apologize. Um, but uh, did you actually get in touch with, uh, 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 with the creators of the impacted apps? Uh, sorry, uh, what, what's the kind did, of apps? Uh, did, uh, you listed... Uh, uh, apps that were impacted by this? Uh, uh, yes, uh, the apps uh, listed in this slides uh, are manually verified, and we have reported uh, our findings to the app developers. OK, um, then I have to find out what happened to your report. Because Thank you very much. Okay, we do have time for a final question. If not, it's also fine. Then we'll be back on schedule. So thanks again for the talk. <laughs>